Paul West had called and he said he liked the way I played defense and rebounded the basketball and he wanted an up-tempo sort of style of playing for the Lakers. Uh, Magic Johnson was on the team at that time so we needed really somebody to solidify the defense and, and outlet passing, rebounding. So I said, what the heck, I'll give it one more try to go down there and try and make it in the NBA. But I, I really didn't think I'd make it and end up going back to, to Greece and playing. Um, that year they increased rosters from 11 men to 12 men and I was a 12th man on, on the roster. Ended up starting about halfway through the season. We won a championship that year, but I, I certainly was uh, not somebody that fit in, uh, in in terms of my style of play and how I looked out there on the court, but I fit a, a role and I played my role really well and it worked for the team. We ended up winning a championship that year and it was an awful lot of fun. It was so much fun being a part of the Lakers in 1980, the growth of basketball if we're in the NBA was growing exponentially. Uh, regional sports networks were coming in uh, to existence. And so now the popularity of the Lakers was expanding because people could see us play all the time across the country. And we were winning basketball games. We were winning championships. So we were the team. We were the Barnum and Bailey of the NBA. And everybody wanted to come out and, and see us play. And, you know, everybody knows culturally in the 80s, there was a, a lot of things going on. Uh, tremendous growth in terms of, of the popularity of basketball, but also having a good time on the court and off the court existed for just about everybody in the NBA. Eh, I'm not gonna get into details about a lot of the stuff that went on, but needless to say, there was a lot of fun to be had for us professional athletes. Well, the black glasses that I wore were basically out of my dad's frustration. I had other glasses that I wore and I was playing football, basketball, baseball, wrestling. I uh, needed the glasses to see, but I was constantly breaking them. So my dad was always lugging me down to Jemco. Uh, a, a local uh, retail store to buy new glasses and he got so frustrated one day he at, asked the optometrist if he had an unbreakable uh, pair of glasses and the guy said funny funny that you asked that I just got these glasses in and they were the, the, the temples folded out there was a rubber piece on the nose and he would slam the frame on the ground. They didn't break. My dad said, perfect. Grab them, put my prescription in there, slammed them on my face and said, here, you wear these all the time that you're playing sports. So it wasn't about style. It was about function. It was about my dad not having to drive down to the local store and get me new glasses once a week. absolutely loved playing against the Celtics. Whether it was a regular season or the playoffs, they were such a good team. We were an exceptional team. And you can't be a professional athlete if you don't love competition. I would rather play against the best teams night in and night out than be in any other sort of competitive environment. And they brought out the best in us and I believe we brought out the best in them. East Coast, West Coast, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, two iconic franchises fighting for the championship level and trying to outdo each other and who's going to have the most championships. The, even the ownerships of the respective ball clubs were highly competitive and wanted to beat each other. So it just made for a, a tremendous environment to play basketball. Their fans hated us. Our fans hated them. It was a joy to play against them. But, you know, in terms of being friends, eh, if we see them out there in the basketball world, we might say hi, but we don't hang out with those guys. There's still a lot of, of hatred in Los Angeles for those green jerseys, and I'm sure it's the same way in Boston for our purple and gold ones.
I thought uh, when I got the nickname Superman, it came more out of the Clark Kent component of it with the black glasses that I wore, but I had a tremendous joy for that nickname. It, uh, uh, people called me Superman. They still want me to write Superman when I uh, do autographs for them. And it's, uh, it, it's just interesting that that's how people identify with me. Shaq, nah, he's a lot bigger than I am, a lot stronger than I am, so he probably deserves that moniker more than I do. But if somebody else wanted to take it, if Dwight Howard wanted to take it, that was okay with me. But I did tell Dwight one time, when he said, yeah, I'm Superman, I said, well, you're Superman number three, really. I was one, Shaq was two, and you're three. Kobe was a rookie and I would work out with him before practice and after practice when he have conversations about basketball. He would always look at my fingers and make fun of me for my fingers that are just gnarly from dislocations on multiple fingers multiple times. And I told him, I said, don't worry, Kobe, you're going to end up with fingers just like mine. And he said, no, there's no way that's going to happen. I left the Lakers for several years. And when I came back, he ran up to me and we compared fingers and we just laughed at it because we almost had the exact same hand after several years playing in the NBA. It's, uh, it was just a fluke how I ended up with uh, jersey number 31. I wore 32 in college and didn't have really a, a, any sort of a, attraction to a number. And when I was going to go down and try out with the Lakers, uh, they asked me about what number to wear. And I said, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, and they asked me, you know, I didn't care what the number was. And they said, well, what number did you wear in college? I said, well, 32. And they said, well, Magic has that. And I said, well, what about 33? And they go, well, Kareem has that. So I went, okay, well, what about, let's go the other direction. What about 31? Is that available? And they go, yeah, that's available. And I go, okay, 31. And that's how it came about. In my opinion, the Lakers are easily the greatest dynasty in all of sports. Uh, we had a tremendous team of young, talented players, all-stars, Hall of Famers. But what was interesting about our team is everybody was willing to sacrifice for the benefit of the team. Magic could have easily scored 40 points a game, but we probably wouldn't, as, wouldn't have been anywhere near as successful. And Kareem and his ability to rebound the basketball and accept a role on the team in terms of being the, the focal point of our offense, but letting other players score as well so that the defense had a lot of trouble trying to figure out who they were going to have to focus their attention on. Thanks, Garrett Light, for having me. I really enjoyed doing this interview. You know, I really like these black glasses. And I think I'm feeling something a little bit lighter tonight. I like these lighter frames. But, you know, everybody kind of knows me with my black glasses. Ah, there. That's much better. <laughs>